Hello, my name is Cathy and I live in Great Yarmouth and today I'd like to talk about this house and some deeds that belong to this house that was built in the 1800s. So this is the deed that I want to talk about. It's dated the 23rd of October 1879 as you can see in that corner and any solicitor who was acting on this property if their client asked them uh, what this document is about, they would say it's an indenture that was put together because um, the property or the land, I should say, was being sold at a low value and so the corporation selling it was wanting an annual rent and so an annual rent charge was registered against the property and that's since been removed so it's not relevant to this particular transaction. So, and that is exactly what my um, friend was told when she purchased the property in 2014. So, the reason that a solicitor would say this is not because, um, uh, you know, they're, they're lying or anything like that, although having looked at this document in detail, that's not quite what it says. But, um, it's not that they're lying, it's just, just that lawyers are taught to skim read these documents for relevance in the current situation because uh, their main criteria is to make sure that the transaction is safe and sound for their client and so you're not going to sit and read it word for word because you're not taught to do that even though you do do that in, in the exams and so on but then the documents that you're given um, are pretty straightforward. So really a solicitor is just looking for, um, is the person selling the property, do they have a right to sell it, are there any charges, burdens, covenants, restrictions registered against the property, you know, anything that the client needs to know, um, or anything that needs to be removed because it's no longer relevant, because it's historic, is the extent of the property clearly marked on the attached plan, is there a clear and free access to the property and then once all of that's been dealt with it gets registered at land registry and the old deeds get destroyed and that's what happens to them this is why you know you can't find loads of deeds and documents dating back to who owned it before that and who owned it before that it's just not going to exist because a solicitor is one not going to want to send all of those bulky documents to their client because of the cost of postage over a period of time nor do they want to hold on to them because these are irrelevant since land registry became compulsory in uh, 1991 and I mean they were being registered way before that but it was compulsory in 1991 to register all new transactions um, no deeds and documents really get saved bar for the odd um, extracts of documents that are still relevant to the property as this one was for a short period of time because it was needed to be able to remove the charge that was still on the property even though the charge hadn't been collected for a long time now all of this I know I'm rattling on but I'm, I'm just trying to make the point that this is how solicitors think and um, they're not going out of their way to lie and this I know because that's what I did for an a number of years I was a property lawyer I'm not now a property lawyer because I took up a different career and that other career is current so you know I don't need to go into details with that but I just want you to know that I do understand deeds and documents and understand how I personally have been misreading them for many many years and I know that other solicitors are doing exactly the same because it's not relevant information but if we have a look closely it's become very relevant to me now because what this is actually saying is whereas I would have mistaken this as being because it's Her Majesty's Treasury and it's the Mayor Alderman and so on which is the corporation and they are selling this to Benjamin Springle who's specifically named as a builder so I would have said, well, this is just virgin land owned by the Crown and that's being sent to, uh, sold to a builder 
and so he's going to build the properties so the properties haven't been built yet at this moment in time in 1879 however it's not virgin land and this I now know because the corporation in this section here are going into detail about how they became entitled to the pieces of ground and hoards hoards being the value that's involved so how did they come to be entitled to it if it isn't as straightforward as it having been owned by the crown and the crown was giving permission for the corporation to sell it well they made an application which had been placed by the town clerk of the said borough on the door of the town hall and basically that application um, and a copy of a memorandum of such application having been freely open at the town clerk office of the said borough for the inspection of burgesses thereof at all reasonable hours during such calendar months that the Lord Commissioners of Her Majesty's Treasury had approved. So basically Her Majesty's Treasury was saying, um, yep, you know, just slap a notice up so that we, you know, we're, we're really, we're going to go through the motions of, uh, we, we know that the land is ours, we, we know that it's um, belonging to someone else, but what we'll do is we'll go through the motions of if anyone has a claim to it, they need to come forward. And it's no different really to today if a mortgage company is going to repossess a property they have to give notice and they'll slap a notice on the front door of the property for a period of time and they will also put a small ad in the local paper to give notice so that anybody who has a claim over it um, and feels that they're owed something um, from that land they have an opportunity to come forward and show the paperwork um, to validate their claim why if this was virgin land which would have therefore been owned by the crown would they be putting a notice out asking does anybody want to come forward and claim this land they wouldn't basically that that isn't what would happen so clearly the land was known to belong to someone else that's why they had to go through this application process so we go on and now they're selling it anyway so they've, they've said how they came by it they've acquired it and they're being backed by Her Majesty's Treasury in the sale of it uh, so it's on a new road because the road has yet to be named it goes on about the numbers of the plots of land on the map of estates of the corporation made in 1861 so a plan is attached here setting out the boundary of the pieces of land that our builder Benjamin is buying and he's buying six pieces of this land so let's have a look at the plan so these are the six pieces shaded in red that Benjamin is buying and you can see the plot numbers are there the houses aren't named because the houses aren't built apparently and yet all the roads have been laid so since when do you know of a situation where all the roads have been laid before the properties are built equally I would point out that this is supposedly a map of estates from 1861 it's now 1879 and yet in 1861 they already knew that these houses were all going to have bay windows because they've marked them in. Also, would our builder be stupid enough to be buying a plot of land here knowing that these are all terrace houses and therefore these are party walls because now he can't build that until he's got these two um, owners of land their permission to get onto that bit of land to build this and you can't possibly build a party wall in a terrace house without building the building next door to it 
So it, there is just no way that this can have any other explanation than the buildings were already there. It's the only explanation for all of that. So, if we look back at this, um, so he's buying his six p pieces of ground um, and it's now stipulating in this document that on each piece of ground there should be one mess wedge, which is a building or dwelling house with brick or cement fronts and slate roofs and it's to be erected as I've said with respect to their respective situations range of line form and elevation now think about what that says it says that he has got to erect the houses with respect to their respective situations. Now how can a virgin plot of land have a respective situation if there's no property on it? Respect to how's, so he's erecting it respective to what situation, what range of line, what form and what possible elevation can there be on nothing on the land? So this is clearly telling you that something is on there and the something that's already built there when the property is erected you have to take into respect the situation of what's there already the range of line of what's there already the form and elevation of what's there already then goes on to say that a further plan and ele elevation um, need to be submitted to by the grantee, which is our builder, to the Burgesses for their approval. So basically, he's got to take a look at what's there already and then develop um, a plan uh, to show what he intends to do further to it and then send it off for their approval. So it also goes on to say that would at the time of erecting said dwelling houses form and make walls before the fronts of the said pieces of ground see it's again referring to it as ground and we already know that it has a building on it and now he's <laughs> so he's got a plot of ground and what he's got to do is build a wall in front of the plot of ground of the width of six feet and then he's got to enclose the area with dwarf walls of nine inches white brick with stone coving and iron palisades and that the same should be of such materials patterns manner and construction as should be approved by the surveyor of the mayor alderman so again he's got to um, put uh, a planning permission in but they're telling him what it needs to look like at the front and what he needs to do to the front of the building and just to show you what they're talking about they're telling him to build this wall at the front so before he builds this he's got to build that and yet we've already seen that the road is already there so there is nothing in this document that specifies how deep that wall has to be. There's nothing in it that even suggests there's going to be a basement level, which is a little bit like, um, I guess, if I get a decorator to decorate my bedroom and I tell him what I want my bed to look like. It's not the information that he needs to be decorating the room. And this is the nine inch dwarf wall and the palisades. See, the, this wall and this dwarf wall isn't really relevant um, to the builder who needs to know what he's got to do to construct this house. It's, it's crazy. The house was already there. That's why. What they're telling him to do without specifying it very bluntly in the documents they're telling him to dig it out dig it out and build the wall and then build up 
from there. So, it goes on here, um, the areas with red brick walls um, have to be of such height, not less than seven feet. And if you can see that there, because I didn't actually highlight this bit, but um, if you read along there, that's what that says about the red brick walls, red brick walls of such height, no less than seven feet from the ground line. The, the ground line being the street, so it needs to be up seven feet at least from the street. So they're telling him to make sure he builds upwards. But what red brick walls are, are we talking about? Um, so it can only be the red brick walls of the building that he's just dug out. So th there is absolutely no question in my mind that not only was there definitely a house there and, and a row of houses there but this document goes out of its way to not say that and to imply that this is a new build and I'm absolutely blown away by this because I've probably had in my hands thousands of documents over the years that could approve this and this is the first time that I'm properly looking and seeing what it's actually saying so nowhere in the document does it mention that the fronts need to incorporate bay windows it just doesn't mention it now if you're that fussy about what the front is going to look like and you know it needs to be nine inch um, dwarf wall and it needs to have balustrades on it then you would mention that you want the bay windows it doesn't mention anywhere in the document that there needs to be a basement level it doesn't specify the depth of footings that are required it doesn't specify a limit to the height it doesn't say that the property needs to facilitate any water or sewage connections despite the fact that both of those were available to accommodations in Yarmouth at that time and I have looked at this particular building that's associated with the deeds and I can see that sewage connections were incorporated into the building but you would think that that would be one of the main things that needs to be mentioned in the original documents so as I said this document is deliberately implying a new build whilst demonstrating categorically the reconstruction of an existing building and that's why this extract right at the top in the corner and these little corner extracts are really because when you know in olden times before everything was uh, electronic you just have masses of paper and you could thumb through the papers and you, you could easily identify the uh, paper that you were looking for so this says Mr Benjamin Springle for a piece of ground and messwidge and messwidge it wasn't just ground he was buying it was ground and a building so this home was acquired by the corporation but I want you to note the plot numbers on just this page run up to 2021 so 2000 actually no it's more than that I've, I've actually got the figure wrong now I'm looking it's 2112 2113 and so on so it's 2121 this goes up to so you can imagine how many homes have been acquired by the corporation and you have to wonder where were all the people that owned these what's happened to the people and I've got a bad feeling I suspect I know the likely fate of the original owners of that land and those properties 
but these deeds back up what was discovered in the two houses that we investigated the level below the floorboards grades downwards towards the basement and by that for anyone who hasn't watched my previous videos this is the front of the house and it's very shallow and it gets deeper and deeper and deeper all the way down to the basement at the back because they were redesigning houses and they were refronting them and there is no question in my mind now and I think the deeds are absolute evidence and I'm going to leave my email in the um, link section so that anyone who has old deeds and documents um, if you want me to take a look at them and see whether there's further evidence I'm more than happy to do so so this house that the deeds relate to had the entire original ground level saved and I believe this was dug out this is under the steps so this is how they've arched it um, and supported it against the wall and that is why this wall is stipulated as one of the first things that needed to be built before this house was being restructured it was a support and that support runs under these steps that lead up to this doorway and that doorway would have been recreated and you can see it's all been elaborately refronted and I think a lot of properties in Great Yarmouth show um, that they've clearly been restructured at the front and the, the fronts are very elaborate like this one and then look at the back of it I mean there's no way that was built like that but I bet you anything you like if I went and looked up um, that property it would tell me that it was all built like that in the first place and it would give me some anomalous date in the 1800s and that goes back to um, the video I made of the jail house or, or the toll house sorry the jail when I was talking about the square windows and the arch windows and it was going backwards and forwards because they've restructured it and they've not quite got the dates right so online the dates are going backwards and forwards and there's a lot of silliness but a very very observant subscriber Claire Billing pointed out that the arches in the Toll House Jail were probably taken from a much older building such as the Greyfriars which just happens to be around the corner from the Toll House and it just so happens to be missing the stonework arches isn't that a coincidence so thank you Claire for spotting that and while we're on the subject I'd also like to thank another subscriber Escape the Prison for send and that's a fantastic name um, for sending links showing the partially built channel tunnel created in the 1800s and that was in reference to my video on the mystery markings of the Great Yarmouth map but wow look at that tunnel and that kind of really is what I had in mind when I was saying I think that the map is showing tunnels that go out under the sea and like the ones that I showed on that map this is only partially built apparently but I do wonder whether you could go down here and find that it actually interlinks to something else if you had a good look around but I'm sure you wouldn't be allowed to go under there but crazily enough I found this and this is uh, supposedly what they had in mind when they were um, putting this together I just thought that that was really quite funny that, that sketch well a whole strong carriage going under the sea yeah right anyway I'd like to thank everyone who subscribed and all the encouraging comments and all the really really well thought through ideas I'm sure that together we are going to pull this off and we're going to work out what happened and then we will work out when and I think today's dates um, of that map that was uh, mapping the um, different plots of land in 1861 might turn out to be a really good clue anyway I have got a lot of commitments leading up to Christmas and so I probably won't be back until the new year and I'd just like to 
um, wish everyone, so anyone that does celebrate Christmas,